Welcome to Crafty Beach. This is Julie. Today I'm going to be doing a Halloween tiered tray for you today. But first, don't forget to hit that subscribe button, the bell to be notified when I post new videos, and a thumbs up is very much appreciated. Okay guys, I needed a Halloween theme for my tiered tray. So our first project is going to be a haunted house sign. So I'm going to use one of these wood plaques from the Dollar Tree. Um, just from their crafting section and I am going to paint this ivory with chalk paint by Waverly and it's got that nice little beveled edge and I'm just doing a quick coat on that raw wood and making that ivory. I want to, there to be a lot of texture in this art piece and so I am then going to take some burlap and just cut that out to size and I'm going to cover just the front part of the sign with that burlap just to give some more texture to this sign and kind of a farmhouse feel. Now, what I wanna to attach to that is that black haunted house that you see there. And it is actually a metal candle holder from the Dollar Tree. And I wanna remove the haunted house to attach on top of the burlap there that we attached to the sign with hot glue. Now, I thought it was kind of flimsy, so I thought maybe I could peel it off or use heat to get it off, but you know what? It was not coming off. I um, finally think, oh, you know, the metal is actually pretty thin, so I can probably just cut it, and that's what I end up doing. I just use my like strong like kitchen aid scissors there, and I snip that haunted house off. Then I just have to cut it straight to make the bottom of it straight, and then I'm just going to attach that to our sign with some hot glue. I thought it needed a little something up there in the corner that was plain. And so I'm gonna use one of these wood bats from the Dollar Tree. They're kind of tricky to get off the clothespins without breaking them, but if you're lucky, you can get one like that. So I'm just gonna take that little wood bat and I'm gonna paint it black with some ink chalk paint by Waverly. And I am just going to attach that little black bat to the top of our haunted house sign with some hot glue. Now to make this little sign stand up, I'm just gonna use one of these giant Jenga blocks from uh, Five Below and I'm gonna glue that on the back. And there we go, we have our first DIY for our tiered tray. Okay, up next is this little fabric ghost that I got at Dollar Tree. It just had a little bit too much going on. Um, it said boo, it had eyes, it had a nose, it had a big smile. And so I'm using my heat gun to remove the felt. Unfortunately, that um, fabric it does not like heat. So I did burn a hole in that, but that's okay. I will just make that side of the ghost my back. So I do go ahead and get all the felt off of there. And I do have to patch that hole that I burnt in there. And what I do is just use a tiny bit of fabric that wasn't needed on the bottom and I just glue that over the top of that hole. <laughs> and it just adds a little bit more charm to our uh, little ghost. I think that I will just make a simpler face on the other side using black felt as well. And I will just cut out two little ovals for the eyes and one bigger oval for the mouth. And it's just gonna be a way more simpler um, face than what they had going on. They just did a little bit too much decorating on this little ghost, I think. And I just wanted to be simple. I really like the fabric um, that it's made out of and the shape, I think it's super cute. And so I'm just gonna attach those new eyes and mouth to our ghost. And he is ready to go on the tear tray. Okay, this next ghost is from the Dollar Tree. It has color changing lights inside of it. It's so cute and you don't have to do anything to it. It's ready to go just like it is. Okay, the next DIY is this little jack-o'-lantern that I got at the Dollar Tree. I wanna give it a makeover. Um, I'm not a big fan of the tinsel. So I removed the black tinsel from the stem and then using my heat gun, I'm gonna remove the jack-o'-lantern face. It's basically just pieces of black paper from it. And I plan to um, make this a fabric co co covered pumpkin 
one that looks um, kind of almost like a pillow. So I'm going to use one of these fabric jack-o-lantern treat bags from the Dollar Tree and I'm going to use that to cover our pumpkin. Unfortunately, it's not quite wide enough, but we're going to make this work. So I'm just separating the front from the back of the bag. Now, for some reason, I didn't think the back of the bag was going to be big enough um, to cover the back, but all I would have had to do was turn it sideways. I don't know why I didn't think of that, but <laughs> you'll see what I end up doing here. So it almost covers like that, and I don't know what I'm doing here, but I didn't think it was enough. So I was like, okay, I'll just use orange burlap to cover the back and the sides of my pumpkin. And that's what I do. I just cart, start cutting strips of the orange burlap and hot gluing those on. I want to cover all of the back of the pumpkin. And this um, color of orange and the orange treat bags, um, they're pretty much the same color, so they go together nicely. Now, it was like a wired on one side, so I do cut that off just to kind of make the burlap um, kind of blend in and look a little bit more seamless with each other. And I'm just leaving all that orange tinsel on there because when I cover it up with a burlap and the fabric, you can't really tell, so no need to take that off. And I'm just kind of trimming as I go if there's any um, tinsel sticking out on the sides. And it took like uh, four pieces to cover the back that's why I was saying it would have been way easier in hindsight just to use the back of that bag. Would have covered uh, the entire back of that and I could have just cut an oval and put that on there. But we have burlap ribbon on the back. <laughs> and so since the little treat bag is a little too skinny to cover the front, um, I just need to use one strip of that burlap ribbon on each side of the pumpkin to cover up the tinsel on the sides. And then I'm gonna use the little treat bag to cover the front. And this did turn out really cute. I think it um, it looks very classic Halloween, a little bit farmhouse. And I'm just attaching those to the side with some hot glue. And I'm kind of determining where I want the face to be on here. And, um, I cut a little hole so I can kind of drape it over the stem so I can kind of figure out how I'm going to get this on here. I attach it to the bottom of the pumpkin with some hot glue and kind of fold that around. You know, it's kind of um, circular shaped, um, so I do have to bend it around the little curved edges. Then once I get it on there, I go ahead and trim off the excess fabric and I'm just going to glue that to the front of our little pumpkin. Now I did take the black tinsel off because I knew you'd be able to see that. So I will replace that with something here in just a minute. So once I get it all on there and glued down, um, it does kind of have a rough edge along the side. So to cover that up, I'm just gonna use some jute twine and hot glue and I am just gonna glue all the way around. I just go across the bottom too and then go all the way up now, when I get to the stem, I just go ahead and start wrapping the stem with that same jute twine. And that's going to give us a cute little stem for our pumpkin. So I cut it to size and then I just start hot gluing. I'm just trying to get it on top of itself where you can't see the little plastic stem anymore. And once I get that on there, I'm going to just give a little lighter to get the excess fibers off. And then I do cut that excess rope off the bottom and it's ready to go. Isn't he cute? I love how he turned out. So cute. Okay, the next DIY is going to be a Wicked Little Witch. So I got this cute little doll from the Dollar Tree and I'm going to give her a witch makeover. So first I take off her dress and shoes, tie up her hair, and I am going to paint all of her skin green. <laughs> so I'm just using some green acrylic paint that I think looks like awfully witchy. 
in a small brush and I am just painting her skin all over green. I'm a little bit careful on the face because I don't want to have to repaint her eyes and they're really pretty. So I just kind of paint around her eyes and then paint everything else this pretty green color. I go around and I do her ears, I do the back of her neck, and then I go ahead and paint the entire little doll body green because her dress is like sleeveless and short. So you're gonna be able to see her arms and legs and like part of her chest. So I just went ahead and painted the whole thing green and she turns out to be such a cute little um, witch. I love her. And the reason that I got one with blonde hair is because I thought that would be easiest color to um, try to uh, color. So I got her all green. And then the next step is I am going to um, paint her dress black. So I'm gonna use that ink chalk paint by Waverly and I'm just gonna go all over. This stuff works great on fabric. So I'm going, it's got like all kinds of like taffia and straps and I just kind of go all over the parts that are going to be visible on her little dress and just kind of sponge that black color on. She also has those two little pink shoes there and I'm going to use that chalk paint as well to paint those little black shoes. I thought she already had this dress and she already had these shoes so I might as well use them. Um, I'm just going to outline her eyes a little bit where um, the paint kind of went over her eyelashes and then draw back on her eyebrows with a black Sharpie. And then it's time to give her a hair dye job. So she had little ponytails. When you take the little ponytails out, she actually has a lot of bald spots. So her hair is just gonna have to be crazy and wild, but that's okay. Which hair, which hair probably should be kind of crazy and wild. So I'm gonna use this chalk paint. I think this is the color Elephant. It's a gray color. And I'm just using one of those chunky brushes from Dollar Tree and I am going all over her hair and just giving her a very quick and dirty um, gray hair dye job. I don't know, whenever um, I used to dress up as a witch when I was a child, I would always do green skin and a witch nose maybe and some gray hair. So it just reminds me of being a witch, even though this witch is gonna be uh, very cute. She's still gonna have some gray hair to go with her green skin. So I just kind of get it the best that I can. I have to touch up her face a little bit because I did get a little bit of gray paint on her face. And now it's time to put her dress back on. It attaches on the back with um, some Velcro. So that's really easy. And then um, she's gonna be able to wear her existing shoes which are uh, the little pink shoes that we painted black. So we're gonna go ahead and dress her. I'm gonna touch up the bottoms on those. And she needs a witch hat. So this, this little witch hat from the Dollar Tree, it was on a stake. Actually, it fell off immediately. I'm gonna use the one that's black and orange and just hot glue that to the top of her head. And this little witch is complete. Isn't she cute? So cute, but so wicked. She's almost like a child witch. I'm not sure why she has gray hair, <laughs> but I love her. And then I thought she needed a witch's cauldron. So I got this great candle um, from Dollar Tree the other day. It actually wasn't with their Halloween stuff. It was with their like regular candle holders, but it's shaped just like a cauldron. And it was white and green for some reason. So I'm gonna paint it black with some of that ink chalk paint by Waverly and um, just kind of go all over. And it's got like a white poured candle inside of it. And it's super cute and it was super easy to paint it black. And I think it looks way better like that than it did originally. And here's our next DIY. I got this Give Thanks um, Buffalo Check Pumpkin Sign from the Dollar Tree. And it says give thanks on there and I'm gonna cover that up with just a little piece of burlap ribbon from the Dollar Tree that I had left over as a scrap. I'm gonna hot glue that over the give thanks so you can't read that anymore. And then we're gonna replace it with happy Halloween. Okay, I got a great tip from one of my viewers. I'm trying to remember who it was, maybe Kim? Oh, 
I'll find out and I'll leave it in the comments. <laughs> and um, she gave me a great tip to use one of these makeup sponges um, from the Dollar Tree to apply the paint to these little wood signs and it goes on really cleanly. You don't get any caught in between the letters and it stays off the wax sides and it worked perfectly. So great tip, thank you. Whenever you see something like that, that I could be doing better, please give me a shout out, I appreciate it. And then to cover that little um, area at the bottom where that had the little wood cutout, I'm just gonna do some leaves off of an old um, plant from the Dollar Tree, but they were a little too green, so I just toned them down with some ivory chalk paint and made them more of a muted color of green so they don't stand out too much. And I'm just going to attach those to the bottom there with some hot glue just to cover up that area where it used to have a little cutout. I'm gonna reattach that little raffia bow because I decided what else would I put there. But then I noticed it had a green stem and I didn't really want it to have a green stem. So I did try to use some of that ivory chalk paint to tone that down as well. That didn't work quite as well as it did on the leaves. And so I go in with some chalk paint in the color of hazelnut and I um, repaint that stem just to kind of make it look more like a pumpkin stem, less like a green stem. And I love this little happy Halloween sign. I think it looks really cute. I love the buffalo check. And I think this will look great on the top of our Halloween tear tray. And here's our next DIY. This is a little jack-o'-lantern orange glass candle holder from the Dollar Tree, but it was very clear and I wanted it to um, be more of a solid color. So I am just painting the inside of the candle holder with some chalk paint in the color of ivory. And I ended up having to do two coats just to kind of give better coverage, just from when you're like looking in it, just to make it look better. But actually from the outside, one coat did great. And then I'm just gonna put a battery operated candle in there from the Dollar Tree. And we're gonna have a super easy little jack-o'-lantern candle. And I love the classic orange and black colors. Ready to go. So cute. Okay, this is a little monogram pumpkin that I got at the Dollar Tree with our last name initial on there. And I love everything about it. It has a burlap ribbon. Don't have to do anything to it. I also got this little black cat solar powered light. Um, let me show you, <laughs> lights up um, from the Dollar Tree. And it was a little chipped up, so I'm just giving it a little touch up with some black paint. And then I think they're designed to be outside, so it did look a little bit um, kind of like an outside decoration. So just to kind of country it up a little bit, I'm just gonna take some twine from the Dollar Tree and hot glue that around the little lights that are the eyes, just to give it a little bit more texture and a little bit more fun. And that's all that little guy needs. And he's super cool how he lights up at night. It kind of reminds me of a real cat where its eyes reflect at night, right? So fun. My son was like, "Why when, when you do a Halloween tear tray? And I'm like, oh man, you're right. I don't even have a Halloween tear tray. I better get on it. <laughs> so we have one now. So just attaching that twine with the hot glue and this DIY was super easy. There wasn't much to this and this little black cat is ready to go. I tried to burn off the excess fibers. It was kind of hard once it's already on there, but he's ready and he's spooky. Okay, I got another monogrammed pumpkin from the Dollar Tree. And this one looks like wood, it's beautiful. And it has a burlap ribbon as well. And it is the perfect size for a tear tray and it really goes with the farmhouse feel of our tray. And this is our last DIY for our tiered project today. Um, this is a wood ghost from the Dollar Tree. And I'm just going over with one coat of ivory chalk paint. And then I'm gonna stain the little stand with some Antique Wax by Waverly. And I'm also gonna use that to distress my little ghost to make him look kind of weathered, kind of farmhouse. I follow that up with a baby wipe and just distress this little ghost. Now, I did think that he needed a little bit more of an outline. I'm gonna have him kind of peeking out from behind another sign and um, 
The tear tray can be seen from the front and the side, and this will be a fun little surprise peeking out from behind. So I just go over all the edges with just a brown um, paint pen and just give a sloppy edge and around the mouth and the eyes as well. And it gave it just a little bit more character. The only thing we have left for our Halloween tear tray today is some filler. So I'm gonna use some of these pumpkins from the Target Dollar Spot and orange, and then I'm gonna use some buffalo check ones from the Dollar Tree and just some ivory ones that I had left over. Basically any little pumpkins I can find to fill up any dead spots on my tear tray. And we are about ready to decorate this thing. This tier tray is the tier tray that's in my living room. It is a three tier tray. It's one of the galvanized metal ones from Target. And I use some of this Halloween ribbon from the Dollar Tree to go around all three tiers just for fun. So there's our little wood ghost and our happy Halloween buffalo check pumpkin right there on top in front. I fill in the empty space with little pumpkins and we are ready to do the second tier. I noticed that ribbon is crooked. I did fix that. And here's our little jack-o'-lantern candle and our monogrammed wood looking pumpkin. And I love this little ghost from the Dollar Tree. That's the second one you've seen me use. We got our black cauldron that we painted. And I'm just using some filler, some more pumpkins, just varying which ones I use. And here's the little star of the tear tray, our little wicked witch. Isn't she cute? I just stood her next to her cauldron. She kind of has to hang out a little bit. Her hat is a little tall. Here is our haunted house sign that we made. And our other monogram pumpkin, this one is in orange. And our fabric jack-o'-lantern, I love that project. And our little fabric ghost can go over here. And how about the black cat in the middle? And then I'm just gonna fill up any more empty spaces with um, the leftover pumpkins. And this tear tray was really easy to put together. I love how it turned out. I love the classic black, white, and orange colors that we're using. Kind of more ivory on some of the projects, but I love all the textures, the different fabrics, the burlap. We got all of our little classic ghosts and jack-o'-lanterns, haunted houses, black hats. We even have a witch with her cauldron and a little jack-o'-lantern back there in the back. And I love how she turned out. She's so cute. And then next to her, we have our ghost. We have our other monogrammed pumpkin right here. And then finally, up on the top shelf, we have our little buffalo check pumpkin that we changed from a give thanks to a happy Halloween with a little ghost peeking out from behind. And then we filled in any of the extra areas with little pumpkins from the Dollar Tree and the Dollar Spot. And I think this is so much fun. I think my son will really enjoy this. My husband too, maybe. <laughs> and if you like this video, don't forget to hit the like button. And if you haven't subscribed yet, I would really appreciate it. We have over 3,000 subscribers now and I love each and every one of you. Until next time, bye.